less generous social safety net, but then lower taxes and then more efficient taxes and lower taxes. And it's clearly been a shift in the pendulum over time um, uh, where we're going to want to lower taxes. And uh, it's clear where we're now moving in the opposite direction where we're going to have higher taxes, a stronger social safety net, um, uh, a little bit more of a continental European model. Uh, and you Europeans work less than we do, and I think part I personally believe taxes are one of the reasons for that, and that may be true a generation uh, from now. Uh, one of the problems we face is that you know um, we haven't really paid the social safety net where you have. I mean, uh, one of the problems I have too with the healthcare issues, we don't worry about the cost. Is the costs are our, our large part of long term uh, healthcare, a large, large big part of our problem going over the next generation. I mean, one of my favorite New Yorker cartoons is uh, a bunch of economic advisors are advising the president, they say, uh, our budget, yeah, our deficit reduction plan is very simple, Mr. President, but it does require a great deal of money. <laughs> and I feel like that is a sense of there's a lot of policies in Washington that have that feel to it. On the question of the Washington consensus and international, I don't think we know yet. I should, I'd be shocked if we see a very different Washington consensus regarding other countries, in part because chief economic advisor of the administration is Larry Summers who during the Clinton years was one of the chief architects of the Washington Consensus. So unless he had radically changed his own view, which may have happened to some extent, I, I, don't, I, so, I don't see, at least from that quarter, a big push and change of how we deal with the rest of the world.